Hey y'all, uh, I've got my hands full. Tyler just dropped me off at the tunnel. Um, and obviously, if you can't hear it, uh, it is raining. It has been storming here for, gosh, two or three days now. And it's gonna continue to storm, I think, for pretty much the rest of the week. Uh, and there's a little bit of a break in the storm. So now it's just raining. So I had Tyler drive me out here to the tunnel because I have a hornworm problem on my tomato plants, which I knew it was coming. We deal with the hornworms every year, uh, but I was out here yesterday pruning everything and trellising everything in the tunnel, and I noticed quite a few tiny little hornworms, which are gonna become giant, massive, fat hornworms pretty soon, and they're gonna do just a ton of damage to my plants. They're already, the little ones are already doing a little bit of damage, but when they get really big, they'll, they'll just decimate um, your tomato plants. So I'm out here, I am going to be spraying BT on my plants today to get rid of this problem. This is something I'll probably continue to do. I say probably, this is something I'll for sure continue to do throughout the growing season. Um, because it is a, it's considered an organic option for hornworm control and it does work really well. I used it for the first time last year uh, and it did a really good job of controlling the problem. So I've got a little bit of time to work. I'm in short sleeves because I really haven't been out much today and I thought it was gonna be warm and like muggy, but it's actually really cool. I'm wishing, I'm wishing I would have brought a sweater, but I'm not, I'm not walking back down to the house. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, um, if you grow tomatoes, if you are a gardener, you probably know exactly what a tomato hornworm is, but in case you don't, I'm going to show you. We are like in the th thick of these tomato plants here. Uh, it, I'm gonna turn you around here. It's, I've got my determinants over here and my indeterminates over here, and uh, I did not leave much room for walking, but I'm, I'm fitting in here and I'm gonna show you I was walking down to um, try to find signs of tomato hornworms um, and it didn't take long to find them. So let me turn you around and show you, first of all, how I recognized that I was having a problem um, and then I'll show you how to find these guys. Okay, so here is one of my cherry tomato plants. This is an indeterminate variety um, and it is, it is uh, the wild boar farm blueberry tomato. Um, so here is sign number one right here. You see those little black um, dots there? That is tomato hornworm poop. And so that is sign number one to show me that I certainly, there's no doubt that I have tomato um, hornworms on this plant. And so the one of the easiest ways to find them, in my opinion, See, they're green, so they're really difficult to spot just with like the naked eye. So you really have to know what you're looking for. So you see this, this hornworm poop here. So what's happening is this guy is likely on the underside. They like to hang out on the underside of these leaves and he's dropping his poop right down here on this guy. So I about guarantee you if we flip this up. Oh, and yep, looky there. You see that little guy right there? That, I'll pull them off so you can see them better. That is a tomato hornworm. And that guy's pretty small right now. My camera's kind of tripping out on me. Um, but he's kind of small, but he will get much larger. And sign number two that I have tomato hornworm issue is right here. You see how he's been munching on this leaf? So he is already doing some damage. He's also munched over here. Um, and as he gets bigger, it won't take him any time to just absolutely decimate this plant. Um, and it will just cause um, just severe damage. So I'm going to pull him off and show you what he looks like. I'm in the jungle here. Uh, this guy here. Oh, Boomer came to visit me. This guy right here. Let's see if I can make that better. Tap my screen here. This is a tomato hornworm. I know it's not focusing really well. I'm sorry. Um, I don't have the best gear for this. That is a hornworm. And I keep saying tomato hornworm. And actually, just last night, I was reading about them. Um, and there's actually a tomato hornworm, and there's a tobacco hornworm. Um, and I actually think that this may be a tobacco hornworm. I don't know that it matters a whole lot because 
either one of them, they damage your plant. So uh, neither one of them are welcome here in my tunnel. So we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna get rid of this guy. Um, and then I'm gonna talk to you about how we control this situation right here. So as I showed you, as I pulled up the underside of that leaf, we saw that hornworm, but he's very camouflaged, right? He looks just like the color of the plant. So unless you know exactly what you're looking for, you're not gonna see them. Even when they get really big, they blend in so well with your plant. So it's really hard to recognize them unless you know what you're looking for. And even then, even when you know what you're looking for, it takes a lot of time to come out and look through each plant and pick off these worms. That being said, that is how we used to control uh, the hornworm situation in our home garden. When we were home gardeners, before we were doing market gardening and we had all of these tomato plants, I've got over a hundred plants in here, um, all behind me, let me kind of pan down here. These are all tomato plants, uh, gosh, maybe 120 over here and then I have all these determinants over here. Um, and hand picking hornworms off of all of these plants is just not feasible. I don't have the time to do that. Um, and there's just no way it's gonna happen. So I really had to come up with a better solution. We like to be organic around here. We, we are not certified organic here. We're not, we don't have any sort of organic certification, but we do your, use organic practices just because that's what we believe in. So um, researching organic options to control tomato hornworms or tobacco hornworms, I guess I should, I should say, or maybe I should just say to control hornworms. Um, one of the things that, or the thing that we decided to start using and we started using it last year was BT. So if you've never heard of BT, you're probably wondering what the heck BT is. Um, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the whole, the whole word, but I will uh, put it in the description of this video because I'm not an expert on BT, but I have done a little bit of research, um, enough to be a little bit of a beginner and give you an idea about what it is and how it works. Um, it is called Bacillus something. I cannot pronounce the T word. I tried to Google how to pronounce the T word. I got multiple pronunciations and so I'm not even going to try to go there. Uh, but again, I'll put it in the description so you can try to butcher it for yourself. Um, but it is a naturally occurring bacteria that's already found in your soil. And so what happens is when a caterpillar, like a hornworm, ingests the bacteria, it actually is very toxic to them and very poisonous to them and it, it kills them. Uh, it takes a few days. Woo! It does take a few days to set into effect after they ingest the bacteria, um, but it does work very well in our experience, and that, so that's why we are gonna continue to use it. Uh, BT does come in powder or liquid form. I Actually, this is the first time I'm ever gonna use liquid. I used a powder last year, it worked really well, and I actually still have some of the powder, uh, but I realized that I had left it in our shed since it does get really hot here and it's been uh, fairly warm, I wasn't sure if the temperature, the fact that it had been exposed to high temperatures would, um, would affect the efficacy of the powder. So I went ahead and picked up some liquid BT. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up here in my sprayer and we're just gonna spray our plants. So I use for a lot of my organic fertilizer <laughs> applications and things like that, um, I use a sprayer, just like a generic, um, one of these guys, I don't even know what it's called. I call it a sprayer. Uh, just be sure that if you're gonna do something like this, obviously you want to have um, this particular sprayer designated only for like organic purposes. You know, you'd hate to use um, a sprayer that has had some other sort of chemical or whatever in it in the past and that get on your plants and, and kill your plants or whatever. So this one is specifically designated for my garden. I know it's safe to use. Um, it's never had anything, but really, I don't think it's ever had anything but, but fish emulsion in it. So it's safe to use. I've got my BT here. It looks like a really small bottle, but per the instructions, I only mix one tablespoon per one gallon of water. So this will actually go quite a long ways. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it started. Okay, she's mixed up, ready to go. Um, per the instructions, you spray all of the plant. You try to basically just coat the plant, um, upper side of the leaves and underside of the leaves in this solution. 
uh, because basically what's got to happen is these caterpillars have to ingest the bacteria, right? So you want to get as much on the plant as you can. Um, so I better get started. I'm done. That took me about an hour or so to get all these guys sprayed. I ended up using, I refilled that one gallon sprayer, sprayer up once. So I used two gallons to get all these tomatoes and I actually ended up spraying the peppers too because if you're not familiar with hornworms, they can get into your peppers as well and start munching on those leaves also. I'm walking back to the house. The rain has stopped, thank goodness, so I can actually walk back. Just making sure I'm not leaving anything. I got my um, BT because I don't want to leave it out in the hot sun. My compostable tomato clips or um, trellis clips came in today. I thought I had ordered those a long time ago and apparently I had them in my shopping cart on the Johnny's website and I actually never ordered them. So I was wondering why they were not coming in. So um, I've actually just been taking my um, jute or my string and just wrapping it around my tomato plants to hold them up and that is really not. At first I thought that's a pretty good way to save some money so I didn't have to buy these. Um, but then I realized that you can very easily break your tomato plants doing that. So, um, tomato clips or trellis clips came in. I'm just making sure I'm not about to bust it in one of these puddles. Um, so, I'm taking those in. Ideally, I would leave them in the tunnel because it would just be easy access to have them in the tunnel um, and, and trellis whenever necessary. But, word to the wise, if you're going to get these compostable ones, I, I started using these last year if you leave them in the hot sun all bundled up like this they will melt into a giant clump um, and it is very unfortunate because these do cost a little bit more than just the reg the regular plastic ones um, so it kind of hurt my heart a little bit when i did that last year so don't leave them out in the sun um, because they will melt into a big clump together i was going to give you guys a little update uh, while i'm walking back to the house on our girls night out event because i think i kind of left you hanging i didn't mean to um, but i did and several of you have asked me how it went um, so if you're new here or you uh, are fairly new you may not know but we did our very first on-farm event uh gosh was it two week two or three weekends ago um, where we did a girls night out on the farm so on-farm events have been something that, gosh, have kind of been in the back of my mind for a little over a year now. Um, something that I knew that I wanted to execute and do out here, but I thought that we just weren't ready. I thought it was gonna be much further down the road. I felt like aesthetically our farm just wasn't ready and um, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't ready personally. And so we did it. We did our first on-farm event. It was a girls night out on the farm. Um, we had, uh, I partnered up with a whole lot of local companies, which was really neat. That was also something I really wanted to do. And I was able to get a really fun nursery to come out and they taught all the girls how to plant their own planter, like technically like the correct way to plant a planter. We brought all the supplies out so they could do their own and they got to take those home. I'll turn you around. We did everything right out here at the window greenhouse. Um, and so they planted planters. We had live music. Uh, Tyler and I know a person from working at the hospital who is just an amazing singer. He is an amazing guitar player and he came out and he did just a ton of acoustic uh, music for us. It was really good. Um, it totally went with the vibe of the night. Uh, what else did we have? We had a local microbrewery come out and that guy is amazing. He crafted specialty beverages just for our girls night out event um, and they were a hit. Uh, the girls loved them. And then we also had a local charcuterie company make some charcuterie boards for us and they were the most beautiful charcuterie boards i've ever seen i did not know that charcuterie could be so beautiful but it was i was almost a little sad to see all the girls eat it because it was really pretty um gosh what else did we do we had yard games oh i had tyler um, make sourdough bread because tyler has really been into on that sourdough train lately 
and he made a bunch of sourdough. He even made this lemon poppy seed sourdough. So he made a regular loaf and then he also made, uh, well, he made multiple loaves, but like a regular sourdough bread and then also this lemon poppy seed bread and then a local oil company came out. Quizito Tasting Room and she has all these really cool specialty oils. Um, she came out, brought a bunch of seasonings, oils and things. And so the girls got to pair Tyler sourdough with all the oils and seasonings and stuff. And it was just, gosh, it was such a good time. Um, the event sold out. Uh, if you've watched previous videos, you know that we did have to postpone the event originally. I did have to refund a third of the tickets. So I sold 30 tickets. I had to refund 10. That was very, um, very stressful we we did have severe weather come through the night that the event was originally planned and so i rescheduled it for the following weekend but obviously wanted to give people the opportunity to get refunds if they weren't able to make it out the following weekend and i did refund 10 people and that was really stressful but within the week i resold those 10 tickets so that just proves to me that there definitely is a market for on-farm events here where I am in Central Arkansas, um, which is really encouraging to me because again, like I said, that's something that I really wanted to do. Um, and kind of now that we have our first event under our belt, it gives me a little confidence, a little encouragement that, okay, we are ready, we can do this. And, and I actually, I've got a notebook in the house of all, it's like a running list of all these events. It totally got me pumped up. For all these events that I wanna do and Tyler and I are actually working on our next event that we want to execute this fall. I do feel like we're a little limited now because it is getting really warm here and everything we do so far is gonna be outdoors. We don't have any sort of indoor or covered venue for that matter. So it's gonna be outdoors and you don't wanna have, or in my opinion, I don't think you wanna have a whole bunch of people come out um, when it's, you know, 100 degrees outside and it's humid as everything and so yeah, um, we're gonna kind of hold off the rest of the summer. It does give us some time to plan out and really execute these events really well, uh, which is very important to me. Um, but yeah, there's my update for the girls' night out on the farm. It was so good. I'm still kind of just on cloud nine about it. I got a lot of good feedback. I did send out a survey afterwards to all of the ladies that attended and I, honestly, I got nothing but positive feedback and that was really encouraging because I expected a, you know, a little bit of, maybe not even negativity, but constructive criticism, but it was just good. It was so good. So that's it. That's what I got for you. Um, I am going to head in the house. Tyler actually just called me a little bit ago, said baby Cal was waiting on me. So I'm going to get in the house um, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.